So this doesn't start any, but I guess there eventually. Uh, so my name is Ken Gagnon. Like I said, I'm not a game dev, but I have been a game journalist in the industry for about 20 years. I attended my first E3 in 1996, and I've written for the Boston Herald, uh, Tech Hive, uh, PC World, and I worked for six years as an editor at Computer World. But despite all those bylines, one place I never thought I would have a presence would be YouTube. <laughs> so two years ago, I went to Machu Picchu, and knowing that I would never likely be there again, I bought my first DSLR. I took some great photos while I was down there, but it occurred to me that I hadn't really used the video function at all, and I was wondering, is this camera any good with photos, uh, videos? So a few weeks after I got back from Machu Picchu, the Nintendo Wii came out, the Wii U. And I, being a Nintendo fanboy, had a pre-order for the launch day. And when I was a kid, I would have, you know, just rushed it home, torn it open like the N64 kid. But now I'm a little older, more mature, and I can take my time. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'll put my camera at the box, and I'll film myself opening it, see what happens. I figure I've done a few unboxings or participated in some when I was an editor of Computer World, but I've never done my own, so this is probably not going to be very good. And now the thing is out, so everybody has one, so they won't care about unboxing. I'll just do it for fun and practice. So I shot it on launch day, took it up online, embedded it on my blog, embedded it on my Computer World blog, went to bed. Woke up the next morning, and it had 301 views, which was like 300 more than I expected. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, that's actually pretty good. Oh, okay, now I'm seeing something. <laughs> what I didn't realize is that 301 is where YouTube temporarily pauses the display of your page views while it determines that the enormous number of hits you're getting are actually legitimate. <laughs> so by the end of the first week, I had a quarter of a million. <laughs> I had a quarter of a million by the end of the first week, half a million by Christmas, and now it's at one and a half million. And I'm wondering, is this a fluke? I mean, does this actually happen? So a year later, I bought the PS4, I unboxed that, and it has two million views. So like, this is just ridiculous. I decided to pad out my channel because you know new systems don't come out every day. So I'm padding it out now with Let's Plays videos, which is not a tutorial on how to beat the game. It's just the subjective experience of me playing the game with audio commentary as I play it. So this was my social footprint leading up to my explosion on YouTube. I thought I was doing pretty well. Uh, but then once YouTube launched my channel, I have to adjust the scale here. <laughs> wow. And although I'm like in incredibly excited and grateful to have this opportunity, the journalist in me is also a little bit annoyed that this is what I'm becoming known for, is unboxings and let's plays. <laughs> because these, these are what I really consider like substantial content. I'm not going to change the world as a journalist by opening a box. <laughs> What I really like to do as a journalist is to tell stories, and one medium in which I've been doing that for several years is audio podcasting. I co-founded and for three years co-hosted the Open Apple Podcast, where every month I would interview somebody who is still to this day using the Apple II computer. <laughs> <laughs> Raise your hand if you grew up with one of these. Represent, sweet, and my shoplifter, Ooh. yeah. Load runner, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good luck. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> In fact, the three people I went to Peru with, all Apple II users. <laughs> so, a little bit of a geek. Uh, so, I loved doing Open Apple, but my co-host was having some mental health issues, and earlier this year, we had to stop working together on this project. I was really sad about that, but it also freed up the time for me to tell some new stories. So I'm like, whose stories am I going to tell now, if not retro computing enthusiasts? Well, back in May, I went to the Games Forum demo night, and at that event was an alumna of my own alma mater, WPI, showing off a game she had made called Gone, a mental illness simulator, which it's an empathy game that demonstrates what it's like to live with depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety. It was, I was just blown away by this game. I figured I could do a let's play of this game on my YouTube channel, but it raises so many more questions than it answers. I mean, it helps me understand why Open Apple had imploded, but I can't just play this game and let it stand on its own. I want to know, how did you come up with these disorders to represent? How did you choose to represent them? What metaphors did you use? You know, what research did you do? I'm like, I could combine a let's play of the game with an interview with the developer. 
So I play the game for a few minutes on YouTube to show people how it works and what it's like, the first few levels or whatever. And then I bring the developer on and I interview him or her with the game still being played. So you can watch the game and hear how it was made at the same time. And if you just want the audio version for on the go, then I'll put the interview by itself on iTunes. So that's how I ended up launching uh, my new podcast, which is called Indie Side. It airs the second, fourth, and fifth Wednesday of every month. And I basically just focus on indie games. I play the first few minutes and four levels, and then I interview the developer. So I've done five episodes so far. I started with Gone, and then I did Breaker's Yard by Dan Dudgenick right here in Boston. And then The Nightmare Cooperative uh, by Lucky Frame. I interviewed Mr. Jan Sesnick in Edinburgh, Scotland. And then Road Not Taken by Spry Fox, who also made Triple Town. Spoke to Pat Kemp out in Seattle. And my next episode comes out Wednesday, and I spoke with Jenna about the accounting <laughs> Well, I didn't mean for this to be like a Boston-based podcast, but that happens to be where a lot of my contacts are. And I suspect that most of the internet doesn't really care where the game is made. You know, in fact, I was really looking forward to having some diversity, because I do a lot of work in the diversity field as well. And so I was really excited to speak with Jan Sesnick about the Nightmare Cooperative. I'm like, uh, what a great name, Jan Sesnick, and he lives in Edinburgh, and I got him on the phone, and I'm like, how are you, Jan? He's like, great, how are you? And he's speaking perfect American. <laughs> and my first interview question was, where's your accent? It's like, what accent? I'm from Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> this interview is over. <laughs> uh, but the show's going well so far. It's not getting the millions of hits that my other videos are getting because on YouTube. This <laughs> isn't even out yet. Yours will be the first to hit a million. <laughs> <laughs> but on YouTube, to really hit it big, you have to put up stuff that people are already searching for, like PS4 unboxing, the day the PS4 comes out, which is why I just pre-ordered the Destiny bundle, and I'm taking that day off from work. <laughs> so watch my YouTube channel that day. So all this stuff is under the name GameBits, that's where I am on Twitter and on YouTube, it is youtube.com slash GameBits, and I look forward to doing more indie games on IndieCider, so thank you.